to it to come, will come, and will not delay. And now there will be no fear within our land, for He is our Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation, and always celebrate it with due reverence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> a reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son you will conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head. For this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, a man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, You will be with child and will bear a son. So neither take wine nor strong drink and eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son, and named him Samson. The boy grew up, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord stirred him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. My, My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. My mouth shall be filled with your grace, and I will sing in your glory. For you are my hope, my Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your grace, and I will sing your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O oh God, I will tell of your singular justice. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. O root of Jesse's stem, sign of God's love for all his people, come to save us without delay. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the command commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren 
and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as priest in his divisions turned before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. <coughs> then when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor, snop, or, nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn, turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before them, he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers towards children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remains mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Setting the, the stage for the events in the gospel, uh, and I know that probably most of you, if not all of you, know this, but Zachariah and Elizabeth lived in a time and a society uh, that regarded fertility very highly. And it was a, you know, it was a blessing. And it was a very positive thing for children to come from a marriage. Uh, the Bible doesn't go into this issue, but one has to suspect that the society there where Zechariah lived was probably uh, largely, they were farmers, agrarian and raising uh, animals. And of course, the more children a, a family had, the more hands to work and help the, not only the family prosper, but the community to prosper. So having children was an important aspect in the society of that time. And Zechariah was, he was a temple priest. And yet he had no children and had been married for a long time. And no doubt, he and Elizabeth were kind of humiliated by that, that fact. And they had lived with that embarrassment probably for many years. Now, Zechariah goes into the sanctuary and he, he's confronted by the angel. Gabriel tells him, you know, don't be afraid. I'm here to tell you some things. And 
It's interesting, isn't it? Now, Zechariah doesn't, you know, he's fearful. He doesn't have any problem with believing that he's meeting and talking with an angel. But then what Gabriel says to him makes him have some doubt. It's kind of a an interesting thing that happens. It seems to be kind of kind of uh, contradictory. The angel's telling him something, yet he is having trouble believing because it has to do, of course, with he and Elizabeth having a child at their advanced age. Uh, boy, uh, I know probably a lot of us feel that way if we were told we were going to have a child. And, uh, <laughs> At my age, I know I would be very shocked. There might be some momentary uh, disbelief. And certainly there's, there's disbelief by Zechariah. And the angel punishes him, but pretty lightly, really. Just makes him mute, makes him unable to speak until the events come about. There's a, also an interesting link to this, this kind of disbelief, and I think there's, there's a message here for us. There was someone else later on, some 33, perhaps plus years later, someone else would have doubt at such an important moment. Our own St. Thomas, the Apostle who would doubt the appearance of Christ in the upper room after, after his death. And there, there's kind of an interesting connection between those events. Of course, we're talking about something very different here with Zachariah and Elizabeth. The miraculous birth of John the Baptist is going to occur. But perhaps the message for us is that Zachariah's experience, as well as Thomas the Apostle's experience years later, offers us an insight about our faith. Regardless of how strong our faith may be, we may enter into dark moments or moments that our faith may be shaken a little bit. We may have some doubts. <clears throat> and these two very strong men had their doubts. They were just men. They were just people like we are people. And we have those weaknesses. But if we can put our lack of understanding, if we can push that pause button and the way Zechariah did it, of course, with the angel's help, was push that silence button. If we could perhaps remain silent like Zechariah, trying to pause our, our doubts, then perhaps, perhaps we'll have an opportunity for the Lord to enlighten us with his truth and love that we might understand. And perhaps... We might not need to touch his wounds to believe that he is Christ and that this miracle is happening. Perhaps we will be able to believe that he did die for us, that we might escape sin. Powerful messages. Of course, St. Mother Teresa what she told us always brings so strong and true. And she said, let nothing come between you and Jesus, between you and love. That also has something to do with, you know, don't lose your faith. Don't, don't let doubt take over. Peace be with you. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. <clears throat> For the church, that in what we say and do, we may testify to the presence of Jesus 
in our lives and in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Our Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are reminded of difficult events and emotions during this season of joy, that they may find comfort and peace and the reassurance of Jesus. Jesus is love. Let us pray to the Lord. Our Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are imprisoned or held captive, for those who are oppressed in whatever circumstance, that the word of God may bring hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For non-Christians who may feel excluded during this season and for tolerance and respect for people of all faiths or no faith at all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves that we may rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in all circumstances give thanks according to the will of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mary Cope, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. As, as it was the beginning, is, is now, and ever shall, shall be, world without end. end. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good will, all this holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon our altars, that what we bring, despite our weakness, may be sanctified by your power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God our host. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O sound in the highest. Blessed is he who becomes the name of the Lord. O sound in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But on the same word, my soul shall be healed. <coughs> the dawn the from on high will visit us, us guiding our feet in the way of peace. Amen.
Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, by these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy, Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to be you, O Christ, of the heavenly host, by the divine powers, Christ in the hell, Satan, and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed, Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God with his angels and his saints.